Hello, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and today we're talking color theory. So by popular demand, you have all spoken in the comments and in the video choice form that I have linked down below in Google Forms. And one of the top requested videos has been my personal approach on color theory, why I don't use the color seasons. We briefly touched on this topic in my fashion Q&A. But today we're going to dive deep and I want to start this off with by no means am I an expert. There are plenty of channels here on YouTube dedicated to Color Theory 101. Go check them out if you're interested in getting a deep dive kind of class, if you will, into this. However, today I'm going to cover what I think is the most important to pull out of color seasons and color theory so that you can apply it to how you dress and your makeup if you are someone who is curious about how colors can make you look very vibrant with little effort. If you love all colors of the rainbow, hi, same. I like to play around, clearly. But this is for those of you who are interested in learning a little bit more. I will include some links down in the description box for some really helpful websites. We're also going to be popping up some pictures of color wheels on the screen. So let's dive in to why I don't use color seasons first and foremost. Actually, before we dive into that, let's talk about, to me, there are two most important things when it comes to fashion and makeup, and that is undertone and contrast, which color seasons call chroma as the contrast. But why that is, is because as human beings, we really visually like things that are balanced and have symmetry. And in order to achieve that balance and symmetry, the easiest way that you can achieve that is through undertone to get all the colors flowing in the right way. And then also with the contrast to make sure that the eye doesn't go to one place and stay there, it kind of sees the whole picture first. So the goal here today is to understand those two things and really find ways that you can start tuning your eye into those subtleties so that when you go to do your fashion look or your makeup look, your eye knows exactly what to look for and understands the nuances and the differences of color. So now, before we go any further, I wanna talk about why I don't personally really jive with the color seasons. The first being that it is not inclusive in two different ways. The first and most important way is that when this theory was developed, I think in the 80s, and when it really took off in the 80s, it probably is no surprise, but is upsetting that it was mostly focused on white skin. So even now, as I was Googling for the other video I did where I touched on this, it is very hard to find resources that are geared towards any other type of skin tone than white skin. And I am hoping that with this resurgence of interest in this color theory, that that can be addressed and a lot more resources can be built out for other skin tones. But that is, that's a problem to me. And then second is it is not inclusive for neutral skin tones at all. So it's putting you in either warm or cool. And yes, someone might be able to tell you that like, well, you have these two. But to me, it's not inherent when you go through that process of how to treat neutral skin tones. It's very much so like if you're neutral, maybe this subset of this one season and this subset of this one season, and it's not really allowing you to play. It's very kind of, I mentioned this in another video, it's a very final thought. It's saying here is the palette of colors that you should wear and that's it. And yes, if you do the research and go through the color seasons color theory on your own, you're going to be able to digest how it works and be able to pick out the important parts. But that's what I'm hoping this video is for you because if you just go to a color analysis person, they're gonna just give you their palette and hopefully they will be teaching you how to flex colors. But for the most part, a lot of the color theory, color seasons discussions out there online right now are like, this is your palette. And I don't jive with that. I think you need to have more information so that you can turn any color that you like into a color that makes you look vibrant as this color theory kind of touts. Which brings me into my second and third point, which is it doesn't take into consideration someone's preferences. I like to wear black, but I need to understand how to make 
black more wearable for me since I am more of a soft autumn and shouldn't be wearing that stark of a color. I love it. I'm still going to wear it. And granted, you can wear it and not worry about color theory at all. Totally fine. I do that some days, clearly. But there are ways that you can tweak it and make it a little bit more wearable. And it's also saying that this one palette from this one person is the end all be all when do you know how many colors there are in the world? Infinite possibility with colors. So one person's palette might be different from another person's palette for the same exact season. And especially with things online, I saw an Instagram filter and it was all the same chroma. Not everybody's the same chroma. That's why that uh, variation exists in the color season. So I just think it's a viral thing that's a shortcut, easy way to do find your colors, whereas I'm hoping that this video is a cheat sheet for how you can do that without an Instagram filter that's not conducive to your coloring anyway. And then the third and final problem that I have with color seasons is usually when you see someone going to get their colors done, in fashion especially, they're like, these are the colors, this is your wardrobe now, only buy things in this palette. I know that there are people out there that know that it's more nuanced, but this is just my extreme example. The only colors that matter are the colors that are next to your face. If you want to wear a crazy colored pant, it's not going to wash out your face because you have all of this in between there to play with. So really, it's just things that are around your face, which is why they hold their scarves up next to your face like this, because they're looking at the colors on your face and really nothing else. Now, are there colors that will make your arms look better if you're wearing a short sleeve shirt? Sure, but for the most part, this is really for the top half of the body, you know? So especially in that case, it's just not, you don't have to go buy a whole new wardrobe because you're a soft autumn. That's what I'm getting at. That's it. So I think I've ranted enough, but back to my original <laughs> statement, the most important thing is undertone, matching it to your natural undertone and balancing the contrast or chroma so that the eye doesn't go to one particular area and stay there unless you want it to. But if you don't, it kind of is able to float and see the main picture, just like a photograph. Okay, so to understand the undertone and contrast conversation, let's do a little color theory 101. If you're someone who already has a grasp on this, feel free to jump ahead. I'll put a timestamp here. But if you are interested, let's dive in to the very, very basics, which is the color wheel, which I will pop up on the screen or maybe over here. I'll scoot over. So you have your primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue. All colors in the history of colors start with a combination of these colors. So everything is going to come from these colors, which is why they're called primary. Then you have secondary, which is colors that result from mixing two of these. Think red and blue, purple, blue and yellow, green, that type of thing. So that's going to be the secondary or the kind of second ring on the wheel that I'm showing you here. Then we have tertiary, which as you probably guess, is the combination of two of those secondary colors. So again, kind of that third ring on this wheel. That's the terminology that we're gonna be playing with a little bit, but out of this wheel, you're gonna have warm and cool colors and that's gonna play into the undertone. So imagine drawing a line and if I can, and I have time, I will draw a line. The red, yellow, and orange is going to be on the warm side, and the purple, green, and blue is going to be on the cool side. I always like to think of fire and water, cool and warm. So that's where you're going to get your undertone from. Now, I do want to have a conversation about neutral, and I'm going to look off to my notes because I'm going to read a definition. So by definition, neutral is a color that's lacking any hue, which hue is another word for color, so we'll be saying that interchangeably in this video. So neutral is lacking in any hue or color and isn't shown on the color wheel, but for the purpose of makeup and this video, let's use this, which is my own definition, as our definition. A neutral color is going to have balanced undertones with warm and cool, so it doesn't lean too far into either one of those. And any color can be neutral by mixing the right combination of colors, whether it's primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, so that being said, talking about neutrals, I want to add in here that you have to remember that skin tone is just like colors. There's infinite possibilities. Neutral is going to be different for everybody because 
you just heard the definition, it's not perfect. So for example, my neutral has a decent amount of green and yellow. Khaki Reviews Beauty here on YouTube, hers has a decent amount of peach and yellow. And then if you look at Hannah Louise Poston, hers has a decent amount of green and then almost gray. So saying that we're fair neutral, it could mean a plethora of things. It's really getting to know the color of the undertone so that you know kind of on the scale of neutral where it lives. And I think that that's why the color seasons don't really cover neutrals because it's a huge gray area, pun intended. So when we talk about getting neutral colors, especially in makeup, the secret is going to be adding a little bit of each of the primary colors. So if you combine into the mix of whatever you're using a little bit of each of those primary colors, you're bound to get a neutral. Now you can take that and say that a red purple eyeshadow is very warm. So if I know that there's a lot of red in it already, I can add a little bit of blue and maybe even a touch of yellow to kind of cancel and neutralize that out and bring it somewhere in the middle of the spectrum between warm and cool into that neutral zone. In the same way, if you wanted to doll down a color, you would use its complement. So that brings me into color schemes. There are seven color schemes, and for today's purpose, we're only gonna focus on one, which is complementary colors. So I will pop another picture up of the color wheel. A complementary color is going to be whatever color is opposite on the color wheel, no matter what type of color you're looking at. And if you add these two together, you're going to get some form of brown, beige, whatever you, you know, whatever, depending on the colors that you're using. I just shorted out for a second. That is where we get into color correcting and makeup where you have purple under your eyes. So you cancel it out with a peach, whatever is opposite of that color wheel. That is what you're going to neutralize or yeah, neutralize that with. I think I need a drink break. I'm back and I think my brain's functioning again. So that's all we're really gonna cover in the color schemes. We can go into further detail. Again, there's a lot of channels that do. If you would like me to, let me know, but Seeking Shifts also does a really good color scheme challenge every so often, so go check out her Instagram if you're interested. But all of that's kind of been background information. Let's move in to undertone because I'm sure you're sitting there like, Rachel, get to it, you know? So finding your undertone. There are a lot of articles online on different ways that you can find your undertone. A lot of people will say to look at your veins, if they're blue, green, purple, all of that good stuff. I'll link some articles down below. Another way is to wear gold and silver jewelry and see which one looks better on your face. That also works, but if you're someone like me and you're like, I have multiple vein colors, I look good or okay in silver and gold, you're kind of wondering like, I, th that doesn't help me. My two favorite ways to finding your undertone is going to be swatching all of your foundations and you will be able to see the slight differences in color, whether it's pink, yellow, more neutral, and make sure you're kind of noting which one is the best match for your face. That's gonna give you insight into that color. Go look at the brand description. Sometimes they're not always accurate, but for the most part, I think they are. And then my second, and this is the one that really helped me out and was where I had the aha moment that I have green in my skin, is finding somebody who's the same level of skin tone as you. So for me, it was someone very fair in natural light, because that's gonna be the most accurate, hold your arm up to them. And it's crazy to see the colors kind of come alive. It was very apparent that I am green and specifically yellow green compared to someone in the same light to darkness as my skin tone. So I highly recommend doing that. That's gonna be a game changer, I think, for a lot of you. It was for me, and what an easy way, you know? It does, you don't have to do all these things and chart this and that. Just hold your arm up to some other people. Do multiple people, you'll really start to see differences, um, and it's super helpful. So let me know if you try it and it helps you, but that's my favorite way to find your undertone. Okay, once you have done a number of those things, one of those things, and you develop or understand your undertone. The thing that I wanna mention here is if you do have green in your undertone at all, you are more than likely neutral. That is a very neutral color when it comes to the undertone of skin tone. So wherever you land, whether it be cool, warm, neutral, neutral, leaning, warm, those are the colors that are going to look the most at home on your skin. And that's kind of where we're gonna leave undertone.
Maybe my brain has not fully caught up, but that does bring us into contrast. We'll get into kind of how to train the eye to see products that do fall into your undertone when we wrap this up. So for contrast, this focuses on how light or dark your complexion is, your eye color, your lip color, your hair color, and the relation of all of that together. So if you look at me, I have lighter eyes, light lips. I mean, I have lip gloss on, but you you get my jive. You see me without makeup all the time. And I also have light skin, but where I get a little bit more contrast is with my hair because it's not quite as light as the other features that I have. But when you look at everything together, there is very little difference between my eyes, lips, and skin tone, and just a little bit of difference in my hair color. So I'm muted. If you have very light eyes, really pigmented lips, and dark hair, you have very high contrast or high chroma, or you're bright and clear in the kind of color seasons world. Now, the best thing you can do is balance this out. So if I go to do my makeup, it is going to be the most suiting for me to bring the contrast of whatever colors that I'm using on my face up to my hair. That way everything is coming at you at the same time instead of my hair being the first thing that you see because my face is totally blank. So that's why I like to really emphasize the line on my eyes. That's why I like to wear brighter lips, a lot more blush and have dark lashes because it brings that contrast up to balance the contrast of my hair against my skin. Now for you, the biggest contrast might be your eyes to your hair. It might be your overall look is kind of on the same plane, even more muted than I am. And that you have to play with a little bit. And that is going to lead us into if you do lean towards not having a lot of contrast, you want to stick to the colors that are shaded to the level of everything else. So instead of bringing these up to your contrast, you want to kind of live at the level wherever that level is for the contrast between your features. And an easy way to do that is going to be playing with tint, shade, tone, and I think that's it. Yeah, tint, shade, and tone. So tone is going to be the most helpful if you lean more on the muted spectrum, but sometimes lightening a shade, which is tinting it, or darkening a shade, which is shading it, is going to be helpful as well. So let's break that down a little bit. I'm going to pop a ColourPop palette up on the screen because I thought this was a really good example and it's actually called, I think, Matte About Hue, which is so funny. So again, hue, color, interchangeable words. So I'm gonna look at my notes just to make sure that I get this right. I hope no one minds. The hue is the name of each color. The example here is going to be red. I'm also going to pop up some examples that I found that were really great. In color theory, when you tint a color or hue, that's when you add white. So the color remains the same. You're not changing the undertone. You're just changing the chroma of it essentially, and you're lightening it up. So if you are fair and you don't have a lot of contrast, adding white can really bring it down to the contrast level that you need. The second is going to be tone, which is any hue with neutral gray added to it. So this is my personal favorite way to mute down colors. And it is when the color remains the same, but it's less vibrant. So if you have high contrast, you're a bright or clear. So in the color seasons, they're telling you to go for more vibrant colors and when you're muted to go for less. So adding kind of a veil of neutral gray over that is really going to help you achieve that. It's what we call dusty or some people on YouTube here call mucky. It's when there's a little bit of gray or beige or beigey gray added. And in this tone variation, it can range from very light to dark. So you can add a light shade of gray or a dark shade of gray. But when we get into adding black, which is the next one, that is different from this. So tone is just adding that muckiness again. So then shade is any pure hue with black added. The color again remains the same. You're not changing the undertone in any of these exercises. You're just adding a pure black and shading it down. So if you are of a deeper complexion and you need to 
tone things around or bring them up to the contrast of your skin tone because it's too light of a shade, adding black's gonna help. Again, this is not talking about undertone. You get into a much larger conversation when you want to change the chroma and the undertone of a product, and we can do a whole video on that. Um, I'm trying to wrap my head around how I want to just organize that information, but for the purpose of this video, we've talked about identifying undertone and staying to your undertone. And then we've talked about how to identify your contrast or chroma levels and three different ways that you can take a color that you already like and bring it to whatever contrast level that you need it to be for it to be the most flattering. Now, as this ColourPop example is up on the screen, if we want to talk about the three things that we just talked about, that center row we're going to say is our baseline or our pure color pigment. So when you talk about tinting a shade and adding white to it, that's when you're gonna see us kind of go up to that second and first row. So you can tint a shade to be just a little bit lighter or you can go into pastel, but that's going to be a tint. Then if you go down a row, interestingly enough, this I think is your shaded row where you've added black and you've made it just a bit darker. Not much, this is a perfect example of adding black does not mean that it's gonna turn almost black. You, there's a range there like I showed before. And then that bottom row looks like they have not just added black and shaded it, but they've added that veil of gray over it so they have toned this bottom row. And I thought this was a really great example. So this is kind of a visual representation of how you can change that color without adjusting the undertone of it. Okay, so now that we talked about undertone and contrast, let's talk about marrying those two in conversation. So the more muted you are and the more neutral you are, you're gonna look for neutral colors that have been tinted, shaded, or toned. So they're not pure hues the more kind of contrasting you are and cool you are, you're gonna wanna look for true hues and vibrant colors that lean on the cool side. So they have more of that purple, blue, green sometimes in the color. And if you have specific questions about that, let me know, we can run through a whole video. But that's how I would apply those two things and that is going to result in you having the most flattering makeup on your face. And then that brings us into the probably golden question of this conversation, which is how do you tune your eye to understand undertone and contrast? And there is no easy way to go about this other than swatch. Swatch all the things, look at color palettes online, start going through the exercise of swatching things and being able to say this has looks like more red in it or this one looks warmer start with just undertone this looks warmer this looks cooler and then start diving into maybe what colors are playing into that read product descriptions of colors look at them when you swatch them go back and forth play with makeup mix colors together it really is about playing and learning and discovering and tuning your eye into that the more that you practice looking at color in this way, the easier and the more kind of muscle memory it's going to become. You'll be amazed at how quickly it starts coming to you too. Just really, it takes kind of studying color. And then I want to say at some point we can do a video where I demo this, but we talked about how to apply this, but here are some specific examples I'll throw in there just to help. So when I do my strong wing, that adds a lot of contrast to this level of my face. So a way that I balance that is I make sure to wear blush, whether it's a strong color or a neutral like this, and I balance it with a lip. Just like the look I did today, the eye is instantly drawn to this shiny rainbow. And to balance that, I wanted to add a little bit more pink to my lips and quite a bit more blush, just so that everything comes at you the same level. I know that it's hard to look away from glitter, but you get you get where I'm going with that. Or doing a strong blush with a statement lip. Or if you do want your lip to be the first thing that the eye goes to, you wear a statement lip and you keep everything else bare. I love that look. I loved that look with that hot coral lip and just a little bit of lashes. But playing with balance against all your features, that's what we're kind of getting at with that contrast conversation. All right. I can't believe this, but we're about to wrap up. So I'm gonna look at my notes just to make sure that I'm hitting the points that I wrote down. To wrap this up, number one, contrast and undertone are going to be the most important 
takeaways to making colors add vibrancy to your overall look and for jiving with the coloring that you already have. They're also the two most important takeaways from the color seasons, but in today's video, we went deep. The second is the things that are going to make the most impact are going to be things right at your face level. So you don't have to buy all new t-shirts. You could easily follow the color seasons by adding a scarf around the neck, a chunky statement necklace and a color, and your makeup, if you want to follow those, that is probably the most important out of all of this in balancing whatever colors that you are already wearing. The third is that the color seasons are a great cheat sheet. They're also a good learning tool if you dive deep enough. But if you do just want someone to pass you a palette, there it's great. You know, it takes the guesswork out of it. But if you're like me and you like to play with color, I hope that this video is helpful in kind of teaching you the most important parts of that. But again, if you're someone who doesn't like to be told what to do, like I am, don't feel confined to your color palette. Colors are infinite, like we talked about, and no one could ever make a palette that encompasses all the colors that look good on your face. And that, I hope, is one of your main takeaways from this video. The fourth is the easiest way to identify your undertones. Hold your arm up to your bestie. Talk about it with your bestie try a bunch of different people. That's my favorite way to find your undertone. Then I hope that you also learned why contrast and balance is important because the eye loves symmetry and balance. We also talked a little bit about how to play with contrast in your makeup and how to change the overall saturation of a color by playing with tint, shade, and tone and not affecting the undertone if it's already a shade that is your undertone. And then last, what I want to leave you on is the easiest way to find colors that suit you is to be to go to a store go to your collection go to your friend's collection and swatch 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 makeup is meant to be fun we're meant to play around with it you can wash it off at the end of the day same with clothes you can take them off at the end of the day so there's infinite possibility on what we can play with and there's very very little risk to not getting it right the first time so i hope that you'll Go forth and play with color, study color, and if you would like to see more color theory on my channel, please let me know if there are specific questions you have. If there's anything you want me to cover in a demo on how I would fix, let me know down below and I will film that. Again, I am not an expert, so don't at me. This is just what I personally subscribe to from a color theory perspective, and I hope that you're having an amazing, colorful day, and I will see you in the next one. But before I go... Just a quick plug, this outfit and eye look I did film, and yes, this is my third video in it because th this is me as an astrological Miss Frizzle teaching you about color theory. All right, have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.